Hello everybody, welcome to Shaders Monthly. Today we talk about the Cook Torrance Microfacet BRDF. This is a reflection model that was introduced by Robert Cook and Kenneth Torrance in 1981. Microfacets are imaginary tiny surface patches that are much smaller than an output pixel. This model allows describing the behavior of the macroscopic surface patch mathematically. The microfacet model approximates the real-world physical material properties more closely than the Fong or Bling-Fong reflection model which we have discussed in episode number 4. Bling-Fong shading used to be the standard in real-time rendering because it is fast to compute. Nowadays the computing power has increased and the computer graphics industry has almost completely moved to physically based rendering, or PBR for short. Today the microfacet model is used everywhere in offline as well as real-time rendering. Therefore it is important for us to know the underlying theory. In a tutorial presented at Seagraph in 2012, Brent Burley, who works for Walt Disney Animation Studios, presented a user-friendly interface to the microfacet BRDF. In this interface all parameters are in the interval from 0 to 1. This approach is the current de facto industry standard to represent a material and is known as the metallic roughness workflow. As the name suggests, the two most important parameters are the metallic and the roughness parameters. For metals such as gold, silver, copper and so on, the metallic parameter is 1. For dielectric materials, which are also called non-metals, such as plastic, wood and rubber, the metallic parameter is 0. The roughness parameter controls the distribution of the orientations of the microfacets. The microfacets are not real geometry, but are only evaluated statistically in the microfacet model. Each tiny microfacet surface behaves like a perfect mirror. For very smooth, polished surfaces, the roughness is zero. All microfacets point in the same direction, and the material behaves like a perfect mirror. If the roughness parameter is increased, the orientations of the microfacets are more random and light is collected from a larger range of incoming light directions. In Disney's model, the metallic parameter could also be set to a fractional value, for example 0.5. This would mean that the material behaves with 50% like metal and with the other 50% like a dielectric material, which is physically not plausible. Therefore, we should not use values other than 0 and 1 for the metallic parameter. If we stay within the physical world, it is much easier to produce a realistic material that works well in different lighting conditions. However, in textures or mipmaps, the resolution is limited and we might have a mix of materials within a single pixel. In these situations, a fractional value for the metallic parameter makes perfect sense. Another parameter is called base color. It is an RGB vector. For dielectrics, it contains the RGB values for the albedo, which is the amount of diffuse reflection in the interval from 0 to 1. For metals, this parameter contains the RGB values for the Fresnel reflectance, which we have not talked about yet, but it will be introduced in a minute. Then there is an additional parameter called reflectance, which is used only for dielectrics. It also contains the Fresnel reflectance, but this time for dielectric materials. This parameter is called specular in Disney's original tutorial notes, but I like the name reflectance much more. Whatever it is called, the parameter controls the amount of dielectric specular reflection. In contrast to metals, for which the specular reflection at a perpendicular incident angle can reach up to 100%, for dielectrics it is much less. It ranges approximately from 0 to 16%. A quadratic remapping function is used to map 0 to 16% to a user-friendly interval from 0 to 1. These very few parameters are sufficient to control our basic microfacet BRDF. Disney's full model has several other parameters for subsurface scattering, an additional clear code layer and other advanced features that we are not discussing today. Now, let's dive more deeply into the theory. Our microfacet BRDF is used in combination with the rendering equation. As a refresher, here is a slide from episode number 4. The rendering equation calculates the outgoing radiance LO in the direction V for a surface patch at location X with normal N. 
The outgoing radiance is the sum of two terms. The first term is the emitted radiance Le in the direction V. This term is only larger than zero if the surface is a light source that produces some radiant flux itself. The second term is the integral over the complete solid angle of the hemisphere above the surface. We integrate over the contributions from all incoming radiances Li from the hemisphere above the surface patch. Each incoming radiance Li from direction L generates an irradiance contribution DE. Each infinitesimal irradiance contribution DE is multiplied by the BRDF, which is short for bidirectional reflection distribution function. The BRDF defines how much radiance is emitted by the surface patch in direction V if it receives an irradiance contribution from direction L. This way, the BRDF describes the material properties of the surface patch. This is where we need to insert the microfacet BRDF that we discussed today. Here you see the equation for the complete BRDF. A quick introduction of the used notation before we talk about it. V is the outgoing view direction. L is the light direction. It points from the surface location towards the light. Consequently, minus L is the incoming vector from the light to the surface. N is the surface normal. H is the halfway vector. It is a unit vector at the half angle between the view and the light direction. The BRDF is a function of the view and the light direction. It has a diffuse part and a specular part. The constant diffuse part, rho d divided by pi, is known from the normalized Fong BRDF that we have introduced in episode number 4. For the specular part, we use the Cook Torrance microfacet model. The Cook Torrance microfacet model has three terms Fresnel reflectance, the normal distribution function, and the geometry term. We will introduce these terms one by one in the following slides. Let's start with Fresnel reflectance. Here you see the image of a swimming pool with a very flat water surface. In the bottom part of the image, we can see the ground of the pool, but here in the upper part, we don't see the ground but only the reflected sky. Why do we observe this effect? The effect occurs because the ratio of transmitted and reflected light is not constant. It depends on the angle of incidence and the refractive indices of the involved materials. If we look into the water from above, only a small part of the light from the sky is reflected in our view direction at the water surface. Most of the light is transmitted and we see the ground of the pool. The more we look from the side and observe the surface at increasingly grazing angles, the larger becomes the reflected part. The more light is reflected, the less light is transmitted. The setup is illustrated in this figure. We have the interface between two materials with two different indices of refraction, eta1 and eta2. In the swimming pool example, we observe the interface between water and air. Because water is an optically denser medium than air, its index of refraction is larger. The angle of incidence of the light is defined relative to the surface normal and is denoted by theta1 here. For a perfectly flat surface, the law of reflection tells us that the reflected direction has the same angle as the incoming ray. Therefore, this angle here between the normal and the reflected direction is equal to theta1 as well. Let's have a look at the angle of the transmitted ray, theta2. During the transition of the light from an optically thinner to an optically denser medium, the light ray deviates towards the normal. Consequently, theta2 is smaller than theta1 for such a situation. Mathematically, the relationship between the angle of incidence, theta1, and the angle of the transmitted ray, theta2, is given by Snell's law. Eta1 times sine theta equals eta2 times sine theta2. Given eta1, eta2 and theta1, we can solve for theta2. With theta2, we can compute the fraction of the light that is reflected using the Fresnel equation shown here. The transmitted fraction is then given by 1 minus the reflected part. Let's look at Fresnel reflection for dielectrics. Light photons are either reflected, transmitted or absorbed with an angle-dependent relative frequency. The reflected part is scattered on the microfacets. 
Macroscopically, this creates the specular part of the reflection. In opaque materials, the transmitted part is randomly deflected below the surface, partially absorbed and emitted into random directions. Macroscopically, this creates the diffuse part of the reflection. The more light is reflected, the less light is transmitted and the diffuse part becomes smaller. The likelihood of absorption inside the medium is wavelength dependent. Therefore the diffuse part is colored and the specular part is not. For metals, the complete transmitted fraction is absorbed. This means there is no diffuse reflection for metals. The reflected part depends on the wavelength. So the specular part is colored. On this slide, we see the index of refraction for several dielectric materials. The table also contains the F0 values in percent. F0 is a reflectance for perpendicular incidence of light when the incident angle theta1 is equal to 0. If you insert theta1 equals 0 into the Fresnel equations, all the cosine terms evaluate to 1 and the equations become much simpler as you see here. If we then put in 1.0 for eta1 for vacuum or air and set eta2 to 1.5 for glass, we can compute a value of 4% for F0. This means that at the transition from air to glass, at normal incidence, only 4% of the light is reflected and 96% is transmitted. On this slide we have listed the F0 values for several metals. As discussed, these are wavelengths dependent, so we have three values for the red, green and blue channel. In the first column, the reflectance values are given in linear space, which we can use directly in our shader code. The second column gives the corresponding sRGB values. As we have discussed in episode number 4, it is important to perform gamma correction when we convert between these two representations. When we want to apply the Fresnel reflectance in the context of the microfacet model, we need to be careful which angle we use for theta1. For a perfectly flat surface, theta1 is the angle between the incident light direction and the normal of the surface. Or, because of the law of reflection, theta1 is also the angle between the view direction and the surface normal. However, in the microfacet model, we assume that the surface is built from tiny surface patches that are much smaller than an output pixel. Each microfacet behaves like a perfectly flat mirror surface. This means we only get a light contribution in the view direction if the normal of the microfacet is pointing exactly in the direction of the macroscopic halfway vector. Consequently, the Fresnel reflectance must be computed for those microfacets which have the macroscopic halfway vector as surface normals. Therefore, for the microfacet model, theta1 is the angle between the incident light direction and the macroscopic halfway vector. Or, because of the law of reflection, the same angle can be found between the view direction and the macroscopic halfway vector. In the paper by Cook and Torrance from 1981, the Fresnel reflectance for eta1 equals 1 is calculated by the shown equations. We see that the scalar product of the view direction and the macroscopic halfway vector is used. Though these equations do not use trigonometric functions like sine or cosine, they are nevertheless computationally expensive. Therefore, the faster Schlick approximation is used in many implementations. The figure shows a comparison between Schlick's approximation and the true equations for glass. For theta1 equals 0, we get 4% reflectance. At a grazing angle of incidence of 90 degrees, the reflectance is 100%. We see that the approximation is not perfect for the in-between angles, but it follows the true graph reasonably well. This was the Fresnel reflectance term. The next term is the normal distribution function. The distribution of the microfacet normals changes depending on the roughness of the surface. For a perfectly smooth, polished surface, all the microfacet normals point in the same direction as the macroscopic normal. For a rougher surface, the microfacet model assumes that the orientations of the microfacets follow some distribution around the macroscopic surface normal. 
So statistically, these small variations in orientation cause the reflected light to be distributed around the macroscopic reflection direction. If the roughness of the surface increases, the scattering of light around the reflection direction becomes larger. There are several suggestions for the normal distribution function in the literature. All three options that are shown here are parameterized by alpha, where alpha is equal to rp squared. And rp is our user-friendly perceived roughness value in the interval from 0 to 1. Furthermore, we see that all three options for the normal distribution function depend on the scalar product of the normal and the halfway vector, which we have also used for the specular lobe in the blind fong model in episode number 4. In the figure on the right, we compare the three options for the same roughness value. The x-axis represents the angle between the normal and the halfway vector. The yellow curve is the GGX distribution proposed by Walter and co-authors in 2007. Nowadays, it is a predominant model because of the softer tails that can also be observed in BRDFs captured from real-world materials. The last term of the microfacet model is the geometry term. Depending on the light's incident direction and the observer's viewing direction, shadowing and masking effects occur at the microfacets. Blin, as well as Cook and Torrance, assume the microfacets are V-shaped and derive a geometry factor from this model. There can be either no interference, a masking effect for grazing view directions, or a shadowing effect for grazing light directions. Another well-known model for the geometry term was proposed by B.G. Smith in 1967. The geometry term is created by multiplying two factors that are computed with the same function G1. The G1 function is evaluated for the light direction and the view direction. Different G1 functions that are mentioned in the paper by Walter and co-authors are given here. A fast approximation by Schlick for the GGX variant is given by this equation. Here you see graphs for the mentioned G1 functions, Beckman, GGX and Schlick GGX for different roughness values. For a roughness value of 0, the geometry term is 1, which means it has no effect. For larger roughness values, we get a stronger influence of this term, which is the expected result because masking and shadowing becomes more likely for rougher surfaces. Let's implement the Cook Torrance Microfacet BRDF. As we have seen, the Cook Torrance Microfacet BRDF that we use in our specular part is quite general. We can use different options for the three terms. Let's pick the Schlick approximation for the Fresnel reflectance the GGX normal distribution function and the Smith geometry term with the Schlick GGX G1 function. I use the GSN composer at gsn-lib.org as a shader editor, but you can use any other shader editor as well. We are writing pure OpenGL GLSL code which you can use everywhere. Links to examples that execute the same shader code using C++ or Java can be found in the video description. Our implementation starts from the Stone Demon example, which we also used at the end of episode number 5 to demonstrate the usage of textures. Open the project Stone Demon and select the graph Stone Demon Fong. We press play in the time control panel. The current shader uses normalized Fong shading. This node contains the mesh data. The model is illuminated with a single directional light source that can be set here. Furthermore, we see that four textures are used, albedo, roughness, normal and emission map. We open the shader editor and inspect the shader code in the fragment shader. First, we look at the uniform variables. Ambient color, specular color and specular factor are related to the Fong shading and can be deleted. Uniform Sampler 2D Diffuse Texture can be renamed to Uniform Sampler 2D Base Color Texture. Description equals albedo for D electrics or F0 for metals. Now we add uniform variables for those microfacet BRDF parameters for which we do not have a texture. Uniform Float Metallic. Description equals metallic parameter. 0.0, .0 for dielectrics, 1.0 for metals. Default value equals 0.0. .0. Uniform float reflectance. 
description equals Fresnel reflectance for dielectrics in the range 0 to 1. Default value equals 0 0.5. Here in the main function, we read the other required parameters from the textures using the current texture coordinates TC. We replace this line for the diffuse color with VEX3 base color equals RGB to LIN texture base color texture TC dot RGB. The computation of the shininess is related to the Fong shading and can be removed. We also remove the ambient term here. Now all we need to do is to replace the Fong BRDF with our microfacet BRDF. BRDF microfacet, light dear, view dear, N, metallic, roughness, base color, reflectance. We define the BRDF microfacet function. VEX3 BRDF microfacet, in VEX3 L, in VEX3 V, in VEX3 N. L is the light direction, V is the view direction, and N is the surface normal. And the four parameters that we need for our microfacet BRDF. In float metallic, in float roughness, in VEX3 base color, in float reflectance. We compute the halfway vector. VEX3 H equals normalize V plus L. Next we compute all required dot products. Float n dot v equals clamp dot n comma v 0 0.0 1.0. .0. Same for n dot l, n dot h, v dot h. Let's compute f0 for metals and dielectrics. For dielectrics, F0 is given by the reflectance parameter in the interval from 0 to 1. We need to map it to the interval from 0 to 16%. VEX3 F0 equals VEX3 0 0.16 times reflectance times reflectance. A reflectance value of 1.0 gives us 16%. A reflectance value of 0 0.5 gives us 4%, which is the reflectance of glass. The F0 value for metals is in the base color parameter. Therefore we perform a linear interpolation between the current F0 for dielectrics and the base color for metals using the metallic parameter as weight. F0 equals mix F0 base color metallic. For a metallic value of 0 we get the dielectric F0 and for a metallic value of 1 we use the base color value. Let's compute the specular part of the Cook Torrance BRDF. VEX3F equals Fresnel Schlick V dot H F0. Flow D equals D GGX N dot H roughness. Flow G equals G Smith N dot V N dot L roughness. VEX3 spec equals F times D times G divided by 4.0 times N dot V, N dot L. To prevent a division by 0, we use max 0 0.001, max 0 0.001. Now we just need to implement these three functions. VEX3 Fresnel Schlick float cosine theta VEX3 F0. Return F0 plus 1.0 minus F0 times pow 1.0 minus cosine theta 5.0. Float DGGX, float N dot H, float roughness. Float alpha equals roughness times roughness. Float alpha 2 equals alpha times alpha. Float n dot h2, n dot h times n dot h. Float b equals n dot h2 times alpha 2 minus 1 plus 1. Return alpha 2 times reciprocal pi divided by b times b. Float g smiths, float n dot v, float n dot l, float roughness. Return g1, ggx schlick, n dot l roughness times g1 ggx schlick n dot v roughness. Float g1 ggx schlick
float n.v float roughness, float alpha equals roughness times roughness, float k equals alpha divided by 2.0, return max n.v 0.001 divided by n.v times 1.0 minus k plus k. I have added max 0.001 such that it matches the max 0.001 function that we used earlier to prevent the division by zero in the microfacet equation. Next, we implement the diffuse part. Vec3 rho d equals base color. Vec3 diff equals rho d times reciprocal pi. And add the diffuse and specular part. Return diff plus spec. However, the diffuse part must be zero for metal, so we add rho d times equal 1.0 minus metallic. Furthermore, only the transmitted fraction should contribute to the diffuse part. The transmitted part is 1 minus f. So we have rho d times equal vex re 1.0 minus f. In Disney's tutorial, two Fresnel terms are suggested for the diffuse part the one for the incident light that we used here, and another one when the light is exiting the medium. The second Fresnel term is skipped here for performance. Many implementations that aim for real-time performance do not use any Fresnel term for the diffuse part. But using the Fresnel term that we have computed anyway is a good compromise to implement basic energy conservation, which is an important goal in physically based rendering. Nevertheless, there is a visual difference to Disney's diffuse model. I copy the implementation of Disney's diffuse term to the shader, such that you can experiment with it if you want. Rho d times equal Disney diffuse factor n dot v n dot l v dot h roughness. Apply code and close. We need to reconnect the base color texture because we have renamed the uniform variable. Okay, this does not look very different from the Fong shading, which is an indication that our implementation is working. Let's stop the rotation of the model. Currently, the metallic parameter is 0. Let's switch it to 1.0. Yes, I like how the teeth look like they are made from metal now. When we switch the metallic parameter back to zero, we can experiment with the reflectance value. Zero for no reflectance, 1.0 for 16% reflectance. And when we set the irradiance of the directional light to zero, only the eyes are emitting light. This is because the emission texture contains a contribution at the location of the eyes. That's it for today. If you have questions, use the comments or get in contact with me. As always, if you prefer C++ or Java source code, this can be found in the video description. See you at the next episode of Shaders Monthly.